Ringside on WGSO, 990 AM, WGSO.com, and also our Ringside radio partner, KKAY, 1590 AM, Donaldsonville, Baton Rouge. Without further ado, let's bring on uh, United States Senator Landrew. And uh, Senator Landrew, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you so much for asking me. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. It's always great to have you uh, on the program with us. Thank you. So how have you been? I've been great, really good. Um, I can't believe that Connor's getting ready to graduate this year. He was four when I was elected, so time just goes so quickly. And Mary Shannon's doing well. The family's doing great. And we'll all be in for the LSU game this weekend. <laughs> that is going <laughs> to be, a, be great. <laughs> one for the ages, I'll tell you. I tell you. I know there's going to be more people outside of the stadium than in, from what <laughs> I hear. But it's going to be a wild time in Baton Rouge. No doubt. Now, uh, let's get into some of these issues. Uh, I'm looking here, Senator uh, Landry, at a new uh, CBO report, but Budget deficit's going to hit $1.4 trillion in 2009. I mean, that's outrageous, isn't it? It is, and um, it is. And this economy is, um, is, is very weak, and, of course, it was caused by many things, but one of them was the complete unregulated uh, markets and, uh, and the collapse of Wall Street and then the strain on the budget for the international efforts in Afghanistan and, and Iraq and and then part of it has just been spending that needs to be reined in as well. So, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. The last time we had a balanced budget was when, you know, Bill Clinton was president, and we need to get back back to a more, you know, fiscally mm-hmm. um, uh, secure and responsible position. And uh, we're making some progress. It's going to be slow, but definitely doable. I remember the debate about spending the surplus. <laughs> that, I remember that. And, that uh, seems like I, ancient I, history. I argued, but unsuccessfully, yeah. for a trigger. I supported the tax cuts, but I uh-huh. said, you know, if it becomes apparent that it, we can't continue to sustain them, then we need to have a trigger so that we can go back to a balanced budget, and mm-hmm. um, we, were, uh, we were not successful. So here we are, and it's a combination of both, I think, both parties at fault, and uh, we've got to find a way no through, doubt. which is one of the reasons that this health care debate is important, because without reforming the health care system, Jeff, mm-hmm. in a way that drives down costs, it will be virtually impossible to ever get to a balanced budget again. That's how big, that's how much money we're spending as a government and individuals on health care and not getting um, a good product, really. Now, I've been looking at reports that say this health care overhaul could cost $900 billion over the next decade. How can we do that when we've got this huge budget deficit that we're, we're trying to figure out how to bring down? Well, first of all, it will cost money, but it's paid for, unlike the Iraq war that was entered into when it was charged to the credit card or the Afghan initiatives under the last administration. None of that was ever paid for. It was just charged on a long-term credit card, which has run up the deficit. This will not be charged to a credit card. We're going to basically pay cash for it. And the way we're going to pay for it, it looks like, is half um, eliminating waste, and uh, some fraud as much as we can, and great inefficiencies in the healthcare system now, which I- amazingly and, and encouragingly, many of the providers, hospitals, um, doctors' organizations are supporting because they know there's a lot of waste and inefficiency mm-hmm. in the system. So that's how we're going to pay for it. And then the, gr- the good news about the Senate finance bill, not the House bill, not the Senate health bill, bill, but the Senate finance bill. This is Max Baucus's bill? This is Max Baucus's bill, Mm -hmm. that the way that this bill is structured, it will actually save money. Um, Once we pay for the reforms, which we're going to pay for, not charge, it'll save money over time, which is what I and many, uh, several Mm -hmm. other moderates and more conservative and moderate Democrats have been saying, we want to expand coverage. We we want to try to... um, help small businesses that are struggling to provide it, but what we really want to do is drive down costs for the government for business. Now, you're not in favor of a public option, are you? No, I'm not, and the good news is is that there is no public option in this bill. What there is is an expansion of, um, of Medicaid, but with a stronger, you know, more responsible program, I guess you can say, a strengthening of Medicare, which is very important to our seniors. Their program is sort of strengthened, and their trust fund, which would go bankrupt in seven years, the the strength of that program is extended out. The life of it is extended out. 
But there is an individual mandate in this bill, because if you think about how to give people coverage, there are only three ways. You either put everybody in a public plan, and that's what they get have, or you require every employer require every employer to provide health insurance. Right now it's voluntary and you get a tax credit for doing so or tax deduction. Right, right. Or you get individuals to do it. And the reason that's important, Jeff, is even though it's different than what we have now, which is a voluntary system, is in the system we have now, the people that get insurance voluntarily are paying for everyone else that chooses not to. Right. The more people we can get in, the idea is at a lower cost for everyone. But aren't there a lot of people that don't have health insurance right now? They just don't want health insurance? I mean, they're, they're either That's young true. or healthy? They they, yes. Right. They think they'll never get sick. They think they'll never get in an accident. Shouldn't they have the right not to have health insurance if they don't you, want it? You could argue that. But then what happens is the people that do have it end up paying not only for themselves but mm-hmm. for them as well. And you push everybody into getting care in emergency rooms, which is the most expensive kind, then people don't get preventive coverage, and it just starts spiraling into what we have now, which is an unsustainable, expensive system. Now, will there be some kind of penalty on uh, businesses or individuals if they don't have? I mean, if no, if... the good news is there's no business mandate. There's okay. No business mandate. There'll be an individual mandate, but but people of modest means and even middle income will be subsidized through the tax code. So. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, um, it will just be a a small percentage of a person's income. We're trying to fight hard to get those numbers down because we know it's very difficult right now for people. But right, because I, I know a lot of people ask, have called but, me worried about right. you know having to pay some kind of a fine or something like that. Well, we're hoping that it won't be fines. We're hoping it'll be a more of a carrot than a stick. But the idea is is that. You know, if we don't try to get more people in to, uh, and I don't think it should be a public system, I think it should be a private reformed insurance market, and we're going to reform insurance companies so people can't be dropped, um, you can't be denied for pre-existing conditions, so it should come as a welcome relief to many people out there that say, finally, you know, we're doing something to give me insurance that I can afford, that I can keep that I will always have. All right, Senator Landry, hang on one second. We have to take a brief time out for traffic and uh, a whole lot more we want to get into with you. Uh, the president's coming. We've got a uh, whole uh, shakeup in uh, Hanno. Got some folks that want to chime in with questions. I know your time's limited, but we'll be right back. Quick traffic update right here at WGSO 99. Gloves on. Lace them up. Take your best shot. It's ringside politics with a punch with Jeff Cruer. Right here on WGSO 990 AM and on WGSO.com. Just call 661-2929 on the North Shore or 556-9696 on the South Shore. All right, welcome back, folks. I want to welcome our friends on WGSO and our ringside radio partner, KKAY, 1590 AM. U.S. Senator Mary Landrieu with us here on the program. And a lot to talk about uh, this morning, and uh, Senator getting ready for the big LSU uh, Florida game. But uh, every day up in uh, Capitol Hill, there's a big uh, battle going on. I'm sure. It's a big game day up here every every day. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, are we going to be able to get a plan, Senator, that has bipartisan support? I mean, uh, we're going to be able to get something that uh, both parties can find something they like about the legislation. Well, Jeff, I hope so. I mean, I've been one of the strongest voices for bipartisanship, and have reached out. Uh, was introduced the only bill that actually had seven Democrats and seven Republicans on it. Portions of that bill, uh, that idea, the Healthy Americans Act, have been included in the Bacchus Mark. Not all, unfortunately, but but parts of it, which is you know progress, but are encouraging. But but in our end, a Senator Olympia Snow has been working as a Republican from Maine, working with uh, the Democrats on the committee. I'm hoping that as the Bacchus bill gets the review that it deserves, um, that more Republicans will step up and say, you know, this is a good faith effort to reduce cost to the government, to try to move our fiscal situation back in a positive direction, and this is something that I can support. Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know, but uh, Senator Bacchus is sure uh, kept the door open uh, and considered, you know, amendments by Republican members mm-hmm. throughout. You think it's better? Th- you, you think it's better than the House bill? 
Oh, it's absolutely better than the House bill, and I wouldn't have voted for the House bill. I don't support, you know, a national public option. I, I don't support, um, you know, taxes and mandates to employers or, or higher taxes, and that was an approach the House took, and none of the, our delegation members, I think, supported mm-hmm. it to their credit. Right. But the Senate bill is a different animal. It it really um, has 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 curbed some of those rough edges and is really focused on what I think the focus should be and others is reducing cost to the government. We have 16% of our GDP right now is spent on health care. It would be great if we were having the best health outcomes in the world. Maybe it would be worth paying a premium for that. But our people are not living as long as in other developed nations. They're sicker, more obese, more diabetes, more deaths from cancer. So we're paying for you know, a Cadillac and driving a jalopy, you know, and I know that parts of our health care system are good, and this is not a criticism of the wonderful people involved in it. Right. And we do have a better system than, than many of these other countries with socialized medicine, well, wouldn't yes, you say? Well, yes, we have a better system than socialized medicine, but we don't want systems. We want good outcomes. We want better health. We want people who are healthy, living longer, you know, lower infant mortality, lower cancer rates. We want a wellness system, not just a sick system. So, yes, it's better than socialized medicine, and and you, and we don't want to have socialized medicine. So, if it has a public option, you're, you're definitely going to vote against it. Yes, um, yes, I am. I'm not okay. supporting a national public option. Now, what I what I will say though, and I've said this from the beginning, mm-hmm. is. I'm also not going to support a system where insurance companies and one of them has a monopoly so that people don't have choices. I want people to have real choices in private, you know, um, systems that are affordable and that are is a reformed market. And so we're going to make sure that that happens. And if not, there may need to be a fallback position. Right. Because you don't want to just have, like, in one state, one insurance company has everybody in it. You know, you want to have competition insurance options. Right. Matthew uh, joins us. Hey, Matthew, good morning. How are you, my friend? I'm doing okay. Uh, Ms. Lander, how are you? Yes, Matthew, how are you? Uh, I've, you know, had better days. Uh, <laughs> it's not a lot of fun being in the oil industry nowadays. Oh, no, and look, we are... It really is. It's uh, it's bleak out there, but we're working hard to promote natural gas. So I hope that we can, once we get off this health care, we can get back on energy and start putting people to work. Oil's good too. Yeah, uh, oil's good. Oil's good too. But we want to really promote natural gas and see what we can do to. Um, well, uh, get that I, I won't mention the dirty little secret that they're produced together. But the question I have to ask regarding this uh, Bacchus health care thing mm-hmm. is, uh, does it allow for a person in one state to buy policy from any state in the union? We are, yeah. Good question. We, we are working on that, and I'm almost certain that the version that came out of the committee allows that. And if, if it hasn't, there will be amendments to do so because we really want to create a strong market, private sector market, so that people have really good, affordable choices. What about tort reform? There are some pieces in the bill that will um, eliminate or significantly reduce frivolous lawsuits, try to reduce the cost of liability that doctors complain about their their mm-hmm. insurance that they have to buy, which gets passed on to the system. So those, and the president mentioned that, Jeff, in his, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in his speech, that he's right. open to some reform. So that's a work in progress, but we hope it'll be a part of it. Because doctors really tell me all the time that uh, this uh, malpractice insurance that they have to pay for is just killing them. Correct, and part and and part of it is think about this. Part of it is insurance companies may be taking advantage of the situation, charging mm-hmm. doctors more than is necessary. And part of it may be um, that some lawyers are, you know, taking advantage of the system, filing suits that have no merit. So what you want to do is figure that out and not just blame, you know, the patient that was injured. You want to right. figure that out and get it a corrected. Now, we do have limits in states like California, right, and right, uh, Louisiana. And Louisiana. Yeah, and too bad all the states don't follow our lead. Yeah, but see, the ar- the other counter, and I agree, the, the mm-hmm. counter argument is we have limits and our rates are still going up, so mm-hmm. do limits work? I mean, that's the other argument. Right. I mean, we're a state with one of the lowest limits. You can't, I think, get more than, I think the limit is $500,000. Right. 
I think it's 250 in California. And it may be 250 in California, 500. And it's been that way since 1980, early 80s. Uh, we'll squeeze in one more quick call, then I want to talk about the president's trip. Paul, if you could ask a quick question or comment, sir, go ahead. Hey, Senator Landry, how you doing? How are right, you, Paul? I have a lot of respect for you because I know you're Thank a Democrat you. that you listens to your constituents. But what I'd like to say is that I drove truck all my life, and mm -hmm. uh, my Uncle Sam wasn't Mama Sam. And i tell you why. The, uh, we, we had a tough, it was like tough love, and this government don't want to give tough love. They want to cuddle the people. And what bothers me is it takes away from the incentive. I raised three kids, put them all through college without mm. using any kind of government money. And then you have the government now who absolutely doesn't know how to run anything. Everything they do is a failure or it's just too big, and it's getting to the point where all right. people should control. L let me give her a chance to respond to that, Paul. Thank you for your comments. Sir. Well, Paul, thank you very much. I don't know whether you're, if your children went to a public college. I mean, that was something that the government helped you to do, and you did a great job with them yourself. But, you know, the governments do support a great system of colleges and community colleges, and, and hopefully our public schools are getting better. You know, so that's a help. And, of course, all the infrastructure, too. But government can get out of control and get too big and wieldy and, and raise too many taxes. And the idea is for government to be efficient um, and to require personal responsibility. And that's part of this health care bill, even though it's, it's somewhat controversial. Mm -hmm. The government's saying, I'm saying, not everybody in the government, instead of having a public option where the government just takes care of everyone. Right individuals have to assume some responsibility for themselves. We're going to help you to buy insurance, help it to be affordable to you, but everybody's got to make this effort. And All right. In, in our final... Jeff, it gets to be, you know, it, it, they're, they're both sides to the right. argument. In our final few seconds here, Senator, the, the president's uh, coming to uh, the area. You're excited about his visit? I am excited. And yes, I'm very excited, and I'm, I'm very pleased. He said he would come within the first year. He's keeping to that promise. I'm hoping that he can spend a good amount of time. They haven't uh, completely gone over those details with us, but I think his focus should be on, you know, levees, flood control, and coastal restoration, yes. which is important. Yes. Orleans, St. Bernard, St. Tammany, our whole region, our right. whole southern state. Thank you, Senator. We're up Thanks. against the clock. Let's do it again soon. Appreciate it. U.S. Senator Mary Landrieu right here in the Ringside Program. We'll be back. Thank you.